Today we have a topic of discussion for this webinar very much related uh, with our lives, our daily, daily lives and the life patterns and even the lifestyle. Evolution of humanity actually, uh, you know, directly linked with this topic that the humanities, the digitalization and the digitization. These three terms these days everywhere and every we are even incorporating all these things in our lives. Uh, and not knowingly, uh, the word digitiza digitization and then the digitalization, then the digital humanities. This is actually the scope of the discussion in this session. Uh, today we have a very, uh, you know, a renowned and uh, uh, famous and learned uh, personality, the beautiful personality, uh, Professor Dr. The Sajda Zaki of uh, Humanities Department uh, at NAD University and a renowned researcher, academician. Welcome to the show, Madam Sajda Zaki, Dr. Sajda Zaki. But a few days Thank before you, I had met you and uh, we discussed about the scope and uh, aim of the digital humanities thing. There were so many things that we discussed in that meeting. So I decided that we should have some audience with us and we should share with the researchers and the Zabistians and non-Zabistians who are with us in this show. And the way of this show is actually to, uh, to introduce a new ways of research, a new researches topic to the researchers of our university. Yes, madam, uh, I would like you to have a few introductory words before uh, going to the action. Uh, welcome to the show, please. Dr. Sajida Zaki, are you here? Auric actually has been established in 2018, and so far the summary of the Auric success is that this have actually bid around 70 million projects to the different uh, donors, uh, research over the faculty across Zabis, across campuses. So this is the summary of the success and uh, previous years and the previous working we have completed, even if we are in completing phase of the uh, of uh, 90 millions around that is NCBC project we have done. Uh, besides, we have taken on board the elite industry uh, in and the shape of steering committee, taken all the consents uh, for this, uh, for their uh, to be uh, with us on board and committee members. And uh, one more thing that I would like to share with all the students is that in the form of Yes Club, we have a platform where the projects of the uh, final year projects are being, you know, uh, analyzed, and uh, we are specially working on them. And uh, we want them that every single project should not be missed out. Uh, whatever the efforts are done in the project, the final year's project, actually, Auric is uh, having a very uh, good mechanism that is to introduce this year. That will be the FYPs uh, conferences. Uh, Twice a year, the projects are being passed out and the projects are being analyzed. And in this, uh, at this time, when passing out with the final year projects, they have submitted, and those projects will be presented uh, in industry in front of the, uh, you know, a group of industries like we have on board twenty plus industry, and uh, those projects will be analyzed through all these uh, professionals, and not even us it will be missed out. So this way, uh, the startups uh, can be promoted, and this way, the, all the projects uh, that can be. Uh, 
you know can be tended well uh, it should not be you know filed and it should not be wasted so this, this is what the auric part and we have our, this constructed our website that is uh, very you know uh, uh, very futuristic uh, uh, website we have made and everyone can ha have a, you know as a facility and uh, can be uh, facilitated with it dr said this is a key you are Uh, madam am i audible to you I think some issue in uh, at the meantime uh, before starting the discussion, Dr. Sardar Sir is going to shortly joining us. Share a very short video of two minutes uh, as an appetizer of this uh, conversation with us. Uh, then you can prepare your mind at what we are going to talk about. Yes, Amber. Welcome back, Mr. Chairman. Here. Yes, I am. Uh, am I audible? Madam, you are not audible to me. Okay, I have connected back. Uh, watch the video for the meantime. must change the way they work and strategize while adapting to the new world it's time to leverage emerging technologies and seek collaborative opportunities to provide new and personalized experiences for everyone digitalization brings the world closer by erasing physical boundaries and breaking limits it's important to keep up with the demands of a transforming world that seeks access to incredible opportunities in the most intimate of environments. Are you ready to lead the fourth industrial revolution? Welcome. 
Welcome to Suntech Confluence. Yes, ma'am. Welcome back to the show. Am I audible? Thank you, um, thank you, Amber. Am I audible? Hello, Amber. Am I audible? please it yes, was perfectly you are audible. audible a while back. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry for these glitches. Uh, I'll try to uh, begin immediately before having any further problems. So uh, if the audience members have a look at my uh, title slide, yeah, I'd like to Ma'am, uh, I would like to ask you first question that is very simple for the layman who all are actually watching us. Uh, what is the digital humanities for you? Uh, what is the digitalization for you? Okay. And uh, okay. where do I, you want its uh, path is going? And a simple definition of the digital humanities uh, and its uh, direct connection with us, with our lives. Okay. A very simple idea. If we look at humans today, and their environment. We start looking at what digital humanities is all about. Our humans have evolved and so does their environment constantly. And when you look at humans today, we are not living in, in the 20th century or 19th century, doing things or executing certain roles that have- Today we are not living in, in the 20th century or 19th century, doing things or executing so I'll just give a very simple example and that is if somebody would think of any I wish I could ask students directly so just that, what is that one particular course or subject that they don't like and and if I begin with this one course, most of the people, if you look at humanities and social sciences, they hate a discipline called history. Today, nobody from amongst our students or amongst our youth, they would like to um, study a subject like history. And this is where if we look at digital humanities, we think of can we create students' interest in the subject by completely revamping the way it's organized. There is uh, Amber. I think there is a lot of noise in the line. Yes, there is, is noise. Okay? I'm also hearing. Uh, but is it okay? Yeah, yes. But when you are audible, you can continue. Okay, okay. Then it's fine if I can continue. So I'll just give one more example. That think of think of a situation where we have publication houses. We have production houses related to uh, books and related to media. And all of a sudden, this 
this one very very well reputed very very well reputed credible publishing house or a production house encounters a situation where one of their author one of their script writer or one of their um, music writer is allegedly found copying or piracy or plagiarism now honestly ask how if i am put into that situation it is humanly impossible for me to wet through so much of data that exist in the form of earlier books authors uh, plays dramas across century and across geography now this is where digital humanities come into play we are looking at the way humanities have been undertaken how this discipline can benefit from the existing technologies so if somebody has an archive available and where you could very quickly putting up putting up down some themes you can vet the plays that were written or that are available a production house or a publication house can very easily save its credibility against any intellectual property infringement or violation of any ethics this precisely is digital humanities on one side you put all the technologies what do we have technologies today we have data visualization we have big data we have um, databases we have corpus we have uh, all other digital tools for creating content for presenting of content for analysis of content now this is one side which is digital and now think of the interface with humanities and with all disciplines problems phenomenon within humanities we are looking at a completely revolutionized functions activities methods tools and techniques within humanities and whenever you talk about an interface which is te technology on one side and humanities on the other side whenever you talk about this marriage of the two very opposing disciplines you see that this new new opportunities new methods and new modalities come into place this is exactly what has happened a while back when i referred to that most of the youngsters if you talk to them today they don't like history as a subject but just imagine what if we change the way history is studied history is analyzed history is presented to the people we will notice that the entire history is revolutionized in the way it is presented so instead of a teacher standing in front of the class and presenting the history content the history content will be through augmented reality virtual reality artificial intelligence through platforms like all these digital tools that are available people would be able to have real um, experience and feel and when you talk about real experiences when it comes to human senses the sounds the five senses you could feel so we are at the moment thinking in our world that there are people in the professions that are trying to give content or interfaces where people can really hear the sights and sound they can have the feel of what the thing is all about so through it, a digital interface you can literally feel the texture of an object which is remotely placed this is where digital humanities come into play i'll very quickly talk about when when you look at the uh, evolution or emergence of digital humanities it's not something new it is it is new only in pakistani context or it is probably new for some people however the first emergence of digital humanities can be identified in the 1940s and from there onwards 
to 2005 where in king's college london the first phd digital humanities program was launched so from 2005 from 1949 to 2005 you see a complete development of a new discipline exactly exactly and beyond 2005 I get so excited that in the same place, King's College, where earlier on this they initiated that we have we will have a PhD in digital humanities. Now they have created that as a department and a center, and under that department they are giving exclusive PhDs within the topics. For instance, somebody is working with library sciences and all of the archival data. over the period of life like 2000 or 200 years and maybe they are creating a database through which people sitting remotely across the globe depending on their own areas of interest depending on their own research topics they can access the data and take that as a as an interface for their own research for development of their own prototypes for the development of their own existing localized Uh, systems so if you if you think of digital humanities it has a great um inter uh, intervention with respect to what kind of methods and modalities will happen i would like to amber just point out that when we talk about digital humanities every book on digital humanities every conference every paper ever written it will make one point and that is digital humanities tend to be interdisciplinary in nature it is at the heart of it because digital humanities itself came about with the interface of technology that is digital world and the digitization with ict whatever name you would like to assign to it and on the other side humanities however when you look at humanities humanities is a bigger umbrella term and within humanities now we are also looking at arts and social sciences combined together so on this side there is this humanities human sciences social sciences the arts and on the other side you have technologies however even if you sit down and work on any project related to digital humanities you will see that it gets further down into numerous other interdisciplinary marriages and con connections for instance somewhere you will be needing a linguist somewhere you will be needing a data science individual somebody you will be needing a person who is good in anthropology on the other side you will be needing somebody who is probably good in philosophy somebody probably who is dealing with um software technology somewhere who is dealing with electronics and this is exactly if you look at any digital um humanities book the themes that occur the subjects the domains that are highlighted they all refer to this wider scope interdisciplinary scope and the scope is determined with the kind of question with the kind of project you are taking it up and if amber uh, you i'll come back to your own question in the initial part which was subsequent to your presentation you you introduce the kind of research you are doing and the kind of research interventions that are being brought out i mean think of social sciences department at zabist and think of the kind of projects phd and ms students are doing out there would these topics be typical pakistani social sciences and humanities and arts topics that probably are frozen back in history for instance most of the time if you visit a university you end up um looking at programs or courses or research that is still not in the 21st century that is still not where you would like that the modern tools modern methods modern principles modern techniques and modern exactly. problems have been had i agree if if you look at the pluses that we have um students in all of these universities from all of these different backgrounds academic backgrounds their social backgrounds their economic backgrounds this is the combination that is needed at the heart of digital humanities 
because people should be trained in looking at things from diverse perspectives not bringing one perspective at all bringing variety of trainings experiences soft skills technical skills and then you think of the context why is it digital humanities the human and the human context is very very important to it i need to take a look at um how are people interacting with each other under the covid pandemic times how are students uh, grappling with the pro problems related to their final year project problems related to their teaching learning uh, interactions problems related to the missing social interaction isn't it now when you look at all these real problems then only you have a question or probably a challenge that digital exactly. humanities would take up so if you have a question then i can continue uh, responding to that uh, yes amber yes ma'am uh, thank you very much for your detailed uh, description on the digital humanity you can understand digitalization in our work yes ma'am am i audible to you yes yes you are i like to scientization uh, sciencing is a part uh, is a part of everyone's life this is basically digital humanities is the intersection of uh, science and uh, humanity i would must say it it is the mingle of uh, uh absolutely uh, amber when we talk about digital humanities and the new generation or the existing time frame then you need to look not as an artist or a humanities perspective or a person from i just refer to that our humanities our uh, social sciences they are still adopting the philosophical dimensions or the thinking patterns or the uh, paradigms that were more suitable for a 19th or a 20th century outlook when we say that we need to use work like a scientist you have to bring that rationality you need to bring that objectivity you need to bring that precision you need to bring that um um i mean applied nature to every topic and every problem that you are dealing with so this is where many people with a concern with digital humanities they do they do suggest that under humanities you need Man, to reform is. you need to reform and make them think like a scientist and this is the reason you can also see that there is a change from mphil to ms globally because most disciplines are now bringing in technology analytical skills training training into some kind of sciences that would provide the base on which people will further take up and revamp their own humanities or social sciences or arts discipline i'll just give you an idea um let's take a look at a a domain called museums when you think of museums go out to people and talk to people how many of them they are interested in investing in 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 buying a ticket for a museum if you ask people how many of them they are fond of visiting museum when was the last time they ever visited a museum here or abroad you will notice that people still are reluctant to go to a museum why because museums archives libraries in pakistan they are still looking or functioning or aligned organized in a very very outmoded way i'll give you an an example from the best the most popular museum from uh, paris the louvre last year under pandemic they extended the virtual tours of the museum and people across the globe 
they were waiting for the tours to open they were willing to buy a very expensive as well as some people who could not afford a real tour or a complete package they went for discounted and partial tours of their own ex i mean interested galleries or interested subjects or interested topics now we need to think about that how a museum under pandemic converted all of its modalities to offer its clientele from continents across the globe to have the same experience if you log, log on to their website and go through their uh, uh, introductory um, material uh, the public announcements you will notice that they have paid attention to not just the digital side they have also looked at human and computer interaction which is a complete science in itself that how can you enhance the experience of a virtual tour tourist how can you enhance that so these are the things that digital humanities does take into account i'll also very quickly uh, wrap up one very important idea that most of the time it's my experience that when you whenever you try to bring in some new ideas for instance i'm sure you will be questioned that no digital humanities is not for us we are way back we are lagging behind we do not have the motivation we do not have the resources we are not yet ready for that now this is a central question that i have faced if you talk about the reason probably i'm speaking with my passion on this digital humanities topic because i have seen that how languages and linguistics actually if you trace the history of emergence of uh, digital humanities it started with literature philosophy and linguistics these were the three disciplines within humanities that were the birthplace for digital humanities because these three disciplines they required new digital methods and techniques from other disciplines in order to move ahead into the new century and that's why i can give my own experience here that as long as you are not revamping your entire disciplinary approach towards digitization and the technologies that are handy and they are useful to you they will contribute to your own discipline and in turn your discipline may also contribute to the digital digital dimension so when you do that you are able to really benefit from this opportunity that digital humanities provided to a person like me who is heading a humanities department and somebody sitting in oric at zabist or the head of or the deans of all arts and humanities and social sciences faculties across universities in pakistan so what are our pluses our strength when we talk about higher education institution a big plus is that there is increased higher education institution enrollment it means more students are enrolled at higher education institutions it means we have greater chance of now tapping onto the student population the second plus is that even last year this year we have seen that the curriculum reforms are taking place in pakistan we have very strong academic Uh, bodies at national level at regional level and at institutional level and they are constantly providing opportunities for any individual who would like to experiment with new interfaces yes. new courses new programs and new uh, subject areas we need to now think of why oric or uh, business incubation centers are being initiated in different universities we need to read them in the last during uh, the last pandemic uh, we have actually uh, we have seen that uh, uh, during the pandemic the digitalization was actually you know emerged in pakistan and uh, we actually was shifted to the digital because the need was there the ground was the total ground Absolutely. was there and it was a great you know place a uh, time to move in this area and to progress in this amber you are very right thank you so uh, much for bringing one, it up ma'am i'm very orthodoxic and uh, one thing I, i i want to discuss with you because uh, we are you know value based 
one thing when when i talk about the humanities i always remember that man is the measure of everything right when is the measure of uh, you know measuring everything if it is on the standard of human then it is fine if it is not at the standard of a human then it is not acceptable at all so this is what i believe in acha do you think I, I that agree. being a human and being a humanities scholar is our our responsibility also to put values in digitalization absolutely because, because see, when people chat online no one is there to tell what are the values of talking but in our daily lives in our childhood we were actually taught by the people how to talk with the people who are not related with you who are elder who are younger online chat no one is there to have a check on us so what do you think can we put some views in the digitalization my concern is basically that see uh, it will only be packaged into the new technology the norms won't change remember wisdom is across all times the values human values the human um, aspirations they don't change truth goodness beauty tolerance patience sincerity friendship love affection dignity integrity these would remain they are always there they will remain for indefinite time periods isn't it it has nothing to do with geography or time frame now when we talk about digital humanities doing the work of a man putting less emphasis on human and more emphasis on technology this is one interpretation so we are taking and putting the man on the side and technology in the front it does not mean that you can change the reality of human nature the biology won't change human and humanities social sciences and anything that you do in any of the other disciplines for instance even if you're talking about engineering even if you're talking about music even if you're talking about media even if you're talking about uh, let's say finances economics any other discipline if it is not socially relevant if it is not socially relevant it will fail it will be a futile effort so we are in 21st century however we are the same human kind it will fail. we are the same human being at the end of the day we have the same emotions we have the same feelings the only thing is that maybe the interaction has changed earlier on you were interacting with a smaller audience now you are interacting with a larger audience earlier on you were doing many things uh, i mean very manually you are now using tools and sophisticated tools in getting the, those things and the moment you you look at large audience or tools there comes the play and the play is maybe while you are accessing large bodies you may inadvertently get into some kind of dilemmas and these dilemmas are also un brought under the lens the starting example that i gave you of a production house or a publication house and they are still doing a service to community and what is that service that they are providing leisure or um, entertainment or educational content to the masses to the society so they are still doing the same job that they were supposed to do in the last century or prior to the last century even in the times of shakespeare we didn't have a uh, uh, television but we had the theater and theater was doing the same service that a production house is doing today so the values won't change the whole idea is that as we are packaging things we need to also think about the human interface and the human aspirations the human personality the human nature the human character i'll just give you one example what if while teachers are conducting these online assessment you know the biggest online teaching learning dilemma is the assessment part because assessment does not leave any room for 100% authenticity and objectivity can we think of that on one side we create the ethical uh, um, uh, values and the training aspect on the other side we also create an interface which is digital technology which probably will alert a candidate or a teacher or a learner whoever or the admin 
anything which is unethical, which is out of the routine norm practice. This is where your question is answered. That you don't need to stand and pass on these virtues. The virtues will be trans transported to them. They will be translated to through a different mechanism. I'll just give uh, another example to support my point. Two, three days back, we had heard that the Supreme Court or some court in Islamabad decided on a case where a lady's land was returned to her based on one digital glimpse that was identified and that was a satellite image of the area. And the case was decided only on the availability of the satellite map. So this geospatial mapping, it's not now only available to people who are in geography or people who are in engineering, environmental sciences. Can you imagine that even law, the legal fraternity, law and justice system can make benefit out of the availability of the technology. And this is what digital humanities is all about. That with one, one technology, you have ensured that the justice was delivered. Uh, over to you, Amber. Uh, Ma'am. Uh, I was actually running very short and uh, the discussion is like it has endless, you know, uh, topics. Yeah. Um, Ma'am, uh, I want you to summarize three to four to five bullets for the researchers to have indigenous research in digital ways. Only bullet points, three to five or just that. Number one. Number one. All people working in arts, humanities, and social sciences, they need to rethink their own discipline and disciplinary practice. Number one, you have to be in 2021 doing arts and humanities and social sciences today, not in some bygone ages. Number two, your research areas, your career expertise, whatever you're planning, it needs to be connected with your immediate environment. And in immediate environment means why would people hire you or support your research? Are you solving any human or any human group's problems? If not, then reconsider. Number three, you need to also develop your skills and competencies in three to four interdisciplinary areas. For instance, today, learning technologies and being a lifelong learner in, in technologies is imperative for everyone on this planet. Number, I mean, the sub point for the same third point is you need to also understand that how different platforms and different organizations are organized and structured. Because if you built on certain projects, if you built on your competencies, you can't do it alone. You cannot just do it by one teacher. You cannot just do it under one program. There are opportunities available within the structure of the organizations and the platforms available to you. So pick knowledge and skills there, harness them. Don't wait for people to come and teach you. Otherwise, it will be too late. So these are three things on which researchers today need to begin with. Otherwise, if they are not developing their skills in multidimensional areas, they will not be able to do digital humanities. Secondly, if they don't even know what are the methods and what is the interface today in 21st century, they are not doing digital humanities. And you need to, you need to arrive at technologies. So these are three bulleted points that I could think of. If you can give me some more time, I can add more to it. Thank you very much, ma'am. Actually, I will be also preaching about these points. And uh, this is a little difficult, difficult because uh, 
faculty is also very much busy in teaching and uh, every time actually we are just uh, interventing and uh, creating opportunity and telling them do this and that do this and that anyways we, we have a very good active researchers here hopefully they are listening and uh, they will listen it later because this uh, webinar will be online they are recording on their page and who have missed it uh, they will listen it later and will get the benefit of it uh, ma'am one picture one photo i would like to share here uh, that is uh this one um, that is actually presenting the evolution This is for just for thinking and uh, to give a uh, you know little food to thought. Uh, Ma'am, actually, uh, one thing I would like to mention that we are chatting, we are talking online, we make love online, we you know give. all the online right we create online everything actually in now the life is like this that we are everything we doing online and uh, this is the digital life life today is life absolutely um amber you are right and we have to live with this life and uh, but we need to make it better every day to make it better true true the humans and the surrounding environment has to improve every day and there are challenges problems that are encountered if you sit down with a person and you ask him okay or her that what are the 10 things that you have suffered because of what are the 10 problems that you encountered today i'm sure just merely collecting a data from 50 people will give you some very very interesting useful work i mean worth research topics because this is where we are looking at real issues and how these real issues impact the human in his or her activities roles and functions and because of this we are encountering numerous social economic political all kinds of issues and when we talk about socio economic development of a country and especially for um developing countries like pakistan this is where you see ict has been pitched in we have the one of the largest growing ict um, sector in the world and this ict expansion creates the ground that can help now in people from all of these other humanities related issues organizations platforms i mean name it any problem missing children um can we think of creating this as one very important problem for digital humanities people to think about they have all so many dimensions coming out of this missing what kind of technologies how can you create a reporting system how can you create a complaint system how can you connect all of those departments that are from reporting to doing action from reporting to rehabilitation can you connect from this one interface this is exactly what um people have been talking about last year the tragedy of pia plane crash in uh, pakistan 
and uh, we had one miraculous survival which was the bank of punjab's president i'm sure you must have uh, read his um, one year um, after one year the anniversary of the tragedy uh, he has written a post yes. and in his read. post he has created a fund and that fund will be used in order to facilitate the victims families in accessing updates can you imagine this is this is what digital humanities is that if there is a crisis under that crisis how can you make the families of those missing people or the victims get relief get knowledge get information get updates they should not be just wondering and and i mean they don't have any access these are things that we need to think about i'll also uh, amber if you just allow me one more idea i mean for me this is my very personal interpretation of digital humanities think about what concerns sure. you think about what impacts you think about your worries and think about your tragedies and this is where you will think of the problems and the directions for research if i think of okay this is a fear this is a problem this is my tragedy i can start thinking about can i do something in order to save all other people from going through the same experience if this starts happening i am sure there is no dearth of people interested in digital humanities there is no dearth of quickly identifying the technologies the topics the uh, methods and tools that are needed to solve those issues no dearth at all then people won't find it that this is something which is not for us this is very much for us thank you amber thank you much madam thank you so very much uh, one couplet i would dedicate to you for this uh, session uh, that by ahmed faraz and i will take permission from my director to mention it because uh, he used to mention it mentions guftgu achhi lagi zauke nazar acha guftgu achhi lagi zauke nazar acha laga मुद्दतों के बाद कोई हम सफर अच्छा लगा मैं मच प्लेजर्स टू हैव यू हियर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू माय अपॉलॉजीज फॉर द ग्लिचेस दैट वी एनकाउंटर्ड इन द इनिशियल पार्ट ऑफ द सेशन टुडे एंड आई कुड नॉट शो यू सम ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट आई हैड प्लान इन ऑर्डर टू रियली कंसोलिडेट माय टॉक थैंक यू सो मच